turn to 444. 444. I love to tell the story. for me and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee in my uh, morning devotionals uh, I believe the other day it must have been 2 Corinthians I'm sorry I can't remember the exact verse or chapter but it said that God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation yes, sir. the word of reconciliation the power of the Holy Spirit that when we speak to someone it has the power to reconcile people to God. Yes, it does. And we forget about that. It's not our words. It's not our power. But it's His power. It's His word. Well, we're glad everybody's here uh, this evening. Thank you for coming. Let's uh, review our announcements. Um, don't forget, uh, October 2nd, is that this Saturday? Okay, the, the men's prayer breakfast, Saturday at 8 o'clock. This Saturday at 8 o'clock. And then Sunday is homecoming. Amen. And don't forget, there will not be Sunday school. And we'll start the service at 1030. Uh, so 
not 11, but 1030. So make plans for that, and we won't have an evening service. And then be praying uh, um, October the 18th through the 22nd. That's a Monday through Friday. Be praying about a tent revival. That's uh, October the 18th through the 22nd. Be praying for that. Amen. Um, our special prayer, of course, keep praying for Justin Baggett. Um, he's been in the hospital with COVID. And I've been keeping up with him. Any updates? He's, uh, he's doing so better, and they're actually talking about moving him out of ICU to a nursing home. Yeah. Um, so he's doing better. Um, they said they had to do an ultrasound on him and everything. Mm -hmm. And they said he's doing better. Um, they said they had to do an ultrasound on him and everything. Mm -hmm. So he's doing Keep her in your prayers. Of course, Miss Sharon Castleberry, keep praying for her. And Brother Bill Guerin, let's pray for him. Um, and also a special announcement. Uh, the church is going to take the children, um, ages 13 and under, to the Rainsville Pumpkin Patch. And um, that, well, we don't have a date yet, but the church is going to cover the cost for the children. And there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer with three possible dates. So... Sign up for the date that you'll be able to go, and the date with the most signatures will be when we go. And, and we take our kids. We've taken them a couple of times to that pumpkin patch. It's a lot of fun. I have as much fun as the kids do. Oh, yeah. it, it's real fun. They've got uh, hay rides. They've got a, um, a four-wheeler that pulls this little train for the kids, you know, and they can go out and get their own pumpkins and paint them if they want to. It's just a whole lot of fun. Um, and, of course, we want to thank the Lord for this past week with Brother Keith and the yeah, revival that we had. And um, it was a blessing, and he preached some wonderful messages, and the Lord just blessed greatly, and we're, we're thankful to the Lord for that. Any other announcements that we need to make? Listen, we're taking all 13 of our kids. The church is taking care of the kids, okay, if they want to go. But we don't mind anybody going. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going I'm to be like a kid. <laughs> well, the more, the more, the merrier. So it would. So, in other words, this is could be a church, a whole church yeah, function. Yeah, but we're, all I'm going to say is, church is paying for thirteen and down. Okay. So, but we're welcome all. It's fifteen dollars to be a part. Uh, if you want to go and all do all the stuff, if you don't want to do nothing, of course, it probably don't cost you nothing. But if you just want to go and be a part and do everything that they allow us to do. It's Okay, for those who are watching from home and you didn't hear that, the church is just going to pay for the kids 13 and under, but everybody's welcome to go. It would cost the adults about $15. So everybody's welcome, and it, it is a lot of fun. And the kids will have a lot of fun if there's more people going, you know. They, they like it when the adults go too, so at least I think they do. My pumpkin, I'm going to paint it to look like Johnny. <laughs> That'll be... Is John, oh, Johnny's not here. We can't make fun of him. <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch it up, Miss uh, Ladies, and I'm going to do, I believe, in a hill called Mount Calvary now. Let's do 318. 318. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary.
second. I believe in Christ who was slain on that cross as the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely, a new life is mine. That is why by the cross I will stay. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost, and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I It's an easy one. Oh, how he loves you and me. Little simple chorus. Oh, how he loves you and me. 349. <clears throat> song, another one written by Bill Gaither, He Touched Me. What number? 505, 505. Shackled by a head.
my Sunday school the last couple of nights, and I was reading through one of my commentaries, and the man that wrote it was talking about in his church that there was a, a stranger, a visitor that would come and sit in church, and um, he was just mean, just mean to everybody. He wasn't saved, and uh, he was just a, a grouchy old man, and you could just see the bitterness in him, but one day he got saved, and he stood up to testify, and he said, I don't know what's happened, but he said, I used to hate all of you, but now I love you. Amen. And this, this verse says, something happened, and now I know he touched me, and he made me whole. Amen. Let's sing this last verse. Since I met this blessed Savior fellowship together. Good to have you here. Amen. Well, it's good to see that back row all full, full. So good to have you all back. We're praying for Miss Sharon to be back. That'd be good. And uh, missing her. Brother Tommy acts better when she's around. 
<laughs> so anyway, it's good. It's good to be back in here again. Thank you all for coming back. Let's go ahead and take up our evening offering. Need two of the men to come forward. Y'all chicken for one of y'all to get up to the other one and get up? <laughs> well, the goose we pray. Yes. Yes, please. Amen. <laughs> it might take me a minute. Y'all, we don't normal we're not singing normally together. We just happen to do this at singing school the other night. It was <laughs> so, really good. Well maybe we can do it again. Yeah, but she played that. <laughs>
That's what, that's some of the Thursday, well, let me just say, Thursday night at singing school, um, Krista and her husband, Keith, couldn't make it because one of their kids got COVID. And so Miss Sue taught Thursday night. And then at the end, we just got groups, let everybody just get in little groups and come up and sing. And so we do have a, one of them groups is coming back. Now they're, I'm telling you, they're amazing. Uh, there'll be three of them. They don't go to church here, but they're going to sing about three songs during homecoming. And if you ever heard anybody sing the, what did do, re, mi part, what do you call that? Four note. Four note. They're going to do it. And they'll sing a verse of it, and it'll be all the do, re, mi stuff. And then all of a sudden, they just tear off in words, and I'll be, and it's just amazing, I'm telling you. And, and even more than that, y'all should have heard Brother Leroy and Susan tear off on a song the other night. It was, <laughs> man, they put everybody to shame. They've been here every night except for the first couple of night or two. But they've been to here, and they sit right back yonder and just smile while everybody's singing. But, man, they tore off on a song, and I was just amazed. Miracle of God. Miss Susan was shouting it out. That is not true. But I wish they would, though. Turning your Bibles to Psalms 107. I'd like to preach on Say It Again. Say it again. God's not like us. We get tired of hearing somebody say it again and again. After a while, somebody telling their same story again and again. God likes it. And He don't never get tired of it. I saved when I was eight. Left hand side of a pew. God likes to hear me tell it. Say it again. Amen. Psalms 107. Verse 2, John Phillips calls this psalm the song of a soul set free. Anybody been set free? <laughs> That's what John Phillips, when he said that, I thought, I'm writing that down. And so, a song of a soul set free. This psalm was written after the people of Judah and Benjamin. You know, that, tr that lower, the two that we was talking about. It's, you know, how Israel split, become ten and two. These two was caught up in captivity by Babylon. They was blessed to hold out right, but even in the end they forsook the Lord and the ways of God, and so God sent them into captivity. And for 70 years they lived in the Babylonian captivity. But at the end of 70 years, just like Jeremiah prophesied, God brought them back home. And they wrote this song to re remind them to sing and to praise the Lord. To keep saying it over and over and over again. Forgetting what the Lord had done for them had brought an unthankful heart. An unthankful heart brings sin upon our lives. And they didn't want to forget it again, so they wrote this psalm. Man, I love this psalm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Verse 2 is where the text comes from. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distresses. He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 15, 
Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Lord, tonight, Lord, I I have something to be thankful for. Lord, it's got nothing to do with me. Everything that these hands ever touched with, with their own uh, strength, Lord, it has come to an end. Lord, everything that this mouth has said has had no life in it when you wasn't there. Lord, everything that I have put my mind to do, Lord, has nothing but become a failure and had death in it. But Lord, everything that you did worked through me. It's been life and it's been good. Lord, I got plenty to praise you for tonight. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'd help the church, Lord, to take their mind, and their hearts, Lord, and go back over their life from the day that they first remember where you come on the scene in their life. Oh, Lord, where they called on you. And Lord, that you saved their soul. Lord, let the, their mind go back to the time that they was in deepest despair. You come walking on the water to them in the midst of their trouble. Lord, let their mind go back to the times that they was in the lowest valleys. And they thought that they was handling they looked back and seen that you carried them through it. Lord, let their mind go back to the mountaintops. Uh, Lord, were you blessed and uh, Lord, you saved and you comforted them and you let them have a shout. Lord, that they might remember all the times that you have blessed them and walked with them. Lord, that they may stop where they're at tonight and say, thank you, God. Thank you for the food that's on my table. Thank you for the clothes that's on my back. Thank you for the friends that I have, the family that you give me, the wife, Lord, that you put with me that I wouldn't have to walk this life alone. Thank you, Lord, for my husband. Thank you for my kids. Thank you, Lord, for the church, Lord, that we might be able to come to and sing as a family and as a body. Lord, the praise is unto God that we might get to hear somebody testify about how good you've been. Lord, let their minds go back. Lord, to get them out of the gutters. and Lord, to get them out of their problems. and Lord, to get them out of their sicknesses and their discouragement. And remember all the times how you blessed them. Lord, that they might walk away tonight with a thankful heart. You've been good to us, God. Mighty good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anyway, as we was reading this today, just today, and it's like the Lord said, there you go, start off. And so when I looked at this, the first thing that I stopped on, we're talking about verse 2, is I had to stop on that word let. Now me and Brother Tim has discussed this word, this three-letter word before. It's only got three letters But it's a big word in the Bible. It's it's huge. I mean, it's overwhelming. Because if we would ever learn to let, it would move things in our life. There would be some things go in our life that we would see God do some things if we would learn to let. Well, think about it. You ever thought about Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5? The Bible says, let... This mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, he says, this mind is there. The problem why it ain't controlling, why it ain't thinking godly, is you're not letting it. We could think like Christ. We do have the mind of Christ. The problem is, is we let our mind control instead of the mind of Christ. And he said, let that mind do it a while. And the problem is, is we don't let. And so here it is. He says it again in Psalms 107. He said, let. So I went and looked up this word let. And this is what it means literally in Hebrew. It means it is permitted. It is permissible for the redeemed to say so. 
It's always proper for the redeemed to say so. Well, they don't know my story. Tell it again. Tell me the story of Jesus. How many times do we sing songs over and over and over again? Man, you should tell your story. What you ought to do is take up some little bit of study time sometimes and see how many times Paul told his story where he got saved, where he got knocked off the horse. Say it again, church. Say it again. Let it so. It means it is permitted. It also means this. It is lawful. Now this is what they're saying. It means in Hebrew, Brother Tim, I pulled out the Hebrew. I'm not smart enough to know. And and it even gave the Hebrew word, Brother Leroy. But I, I can't hardly speak good English. So I didn't even write that Hebrew word down. It was only like this big. And I had a whole bunch of little dot and tittles on top of it. I said, that's just good enough to me to know it's there. Just tell me what it means. And it is permitted. It is lawful. It is lawful for us to tell it again. To let it be told again. It's lawful. Man, God likes it. And then it's another word that comes, and I went and looked up this, but it also means to suffer someone to say so. And it, that suffer means, one, the first one, and here it is again, to permit. The other one it means to give, to let them do it. Give them a spot for it. And then the other one it means on the suffer, not to hinder them from doing so. God is trying to tell us tonight with that one little word, let, it's not me supposed to give you a spot. It's you supposed to give you a spot. Do you understand what I'm saying there? When I got to studying it, Brother Tommy, it come down not for somebody else to give you a spot to, to say so. It's you allow that new man in you to have a spot to say so. We're our worst enemy. We is what keep us from testifying and thanking the Lord publicly. It's us. It's not me. It's not the person beside me. It's our own thinking that keeps us from saying so. And He says, the the Word of God, the Lord says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of And so then I went and looked on, who is it? And y'all already know it. It's going to be simple, but at the same time it is so deep. Who is it that's supposed to say so? The redeemed. I want to ask you, have you been redeemed? God is saying, let the people of the... Lord, No, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Why don't we say so? God's give you the right, and He's told you to do it. What keeps us from saying so? So the redeemed, I went and looked that up. Redeemed means to buy, to buy out. As a slave being purchased, not just to buy out, but a slave to being purchased to be set free. You've been set free, you've been bought out, and then set free to say so. He didn't buy you out and then put you over here in a spot where he wants to keep you quiet You've been bought out where you used to not have rights, where you used to not have the liberty that we have in Jesus Christ. You've been bought out from shackled and beat down and beat up. You've been brought out and then God set you back and gave you somewhere to say so. It's not. You understand that God did that, Brother Tim, so that you could say so. Thank God. 
Thank God. So the Bible says in Titus chapter 2, verse 13 through 14, here's some things that we've been redeemed from. It says that we have been, let me read it. If, no, yeah, did I write it down? Yeah, I'm going to read it. Titus. I thought I wrote that one down. It's in there somewhere. Titus 2, 13 and 14. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You know what your works is when you start looking up? You know what one of the works is? To say so. To say so. You've been brought out. Uh, you've been redeemed. Uh, you've been taken out from iniquity. You've been redeemed from your sin. The Bible says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. The Lord has bought you, redeemed you out from your sin. It's no longer been held over you. It's no longer controlling you. You are redeemed from your sin. You're redeemed. Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 and 5. You've been redeemed, bought out from the law. But when the fullness of time are come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. He brought us out, bought us out, redeemed us out from the law, and then brought us back in as sons. If there's ever anybody that's got a right to say so, is the sons of God. <laughs> redeemed. you also been redeemed from the death, hell, and the grave. Because I sinned, and because I was under the law, Romans 6, 23, y'all know that, and for the wages of sin is death. We'll stop right there. Galatians chapter 3 and verses 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. It was me that should have hung on that tree. It was me that should have died. I was the sinner. If I sin, I'm supposed to die. But God redeemed me from that death. Amen. If there's anybody that's got a right to, uh, to say so is the redeemed that don't no longer have to face death if we are to speak of. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you some things that you've been redeemed from. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verses uh, 54 through 57. So when this corruptible, y'all know what that is, that's that flesh, you tow it around and you wash it because it stinks. Say amen there, Brother Tim. I wasn't trying to point out your flesh. I didn't nobody agree with me. I was wanting you to back me. You, I want you all to know our flesh at its best is dung. Our flesh is no good. My heart is wicked. This natured heart is wicked. This mind, even though I've been saved since eight years old, I fight it every day. It thinks some of the wickedest things since I have been saved. It has thought more wicked stuff than good. You understand, this ain't the mind of Christ it's what put in me is what is the mind of Christ. This flesh is wicked. It wants to be petted. It wants to be uh, just told how good it is, but it's not. Now, so when this corruptible 
shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. They're constantly trying to think of ways for you to live longer. You're still going to die. I, they might make it to where you can live another 10 years, but can I tell you this? You're still going to die. Unless the Lord comes back, we're going to die. So when uh, this, uh, let me, let's see, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Well, I've done been redeemed from them. They're gone. But that's why he said this. And it goes right along with back to Psalms 107. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all, this corruptible right here might drop dead while I'm preaching. But can I tell you, all it will do will loose me into my new body. It will loose me and let me go to heaven. It will loose me and let me into the arms of Jesus Christ. I got victory. So thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And so I'm just giving you some things. What we just, uh, what, just exactly what we've been redeemed from. Then we get into the next one. Well, then what should we say? It says back in there, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of his enemy. Okay, what is it that I'm supposed to be? Well, let me show you. If, if this would have been wrote in today's English, and I'm glad it's not, because we would mess it up, but it would go like this. The redeemed of the Lord should say, thanks unto the Lord. You understand, he told what we should be given thanks in verse 1 before he says, we should say so. In other words, you should be saying some things and this is what you should be doing. Thanks to him. Thanks to him. I'll never be the same. Thanks to him. You should come up with all kind of ways to keep telling him, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Every time your sin, your flesh sins, that's not me. Thank you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave His Son of God for love for me. Oh, you got a reason to be thankful tonight. You got a reason. And then he goes on and he starts telling some things that we ought to be thankful for. Verse 1 says that we need to be thankful because He is good. God is good. And He's constantly been good in our lives. The things that we thought were bad to us, God worked it out for good. Romans 8, 28. The things that we think were hard, the things that we thought was breaking us down, they were, but they was drawing us to Him. Them things was corralling us to the Lord. Them things was pushing us to the Lord. The Lord had to show me that I was lost and I was going to hell to get me to go and ask Him to save me. The Lord has done some hard things in my life, but it caused me to call out and find out just how good God is. It was Him that got me to the place where I'd accepted the call to preach. It was Him that got me to where I could trust in Him through my problems because He brought me through the problems of yesteryears. You understand, God is good. And He always has been. And you need to thank Him for being good. Well, I don't like that He took this or took that or done that. That's all right. When you get to heaven, you might not never see it on this side. But when you get to heaven, He's going to show you what that did and why it was good. And when in heaven, you're going to go, Man, I wished I'd have known that. Man, I wished I'd have known that. And then the Bible says that for His mercy, verse 1, endureth forever. We ought to be thankful that He has mercy 
on people that shouldn't deserve mercy. God has given us mercy beyond what we ever could think of. And we sometimes we sit back and we don't even recognize the mercies of God in our life. Thank God He's merciful. The Bible said in Lamentations chapter 3 that His mercies and His compassion, they are new every morning. You marred up His mercies yesterday. You stomped on them. You turned your back on them. And that's all right. They've been new this morning. And you better thank God for that. And then you got 1 Peter Oh yeah, well let let me just give you the next one. Because they are forever. Not just that He has mercy, but they are forever. I would have quit throwing mercy by my way a long time ago. But God's mercies endure forever. Let me show you the next one. Verse 3, we ought to be thankful that God takes us out of things. Look at verse 3. And He gathered them out of the lands from east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Ain't you glad that God just didn't pick England to be saved and left the rest of us out? Ain't you glad that God says, I'm only going to save you if, if you're from the land of Africa. Nobody else has a choice. It's just Africa. That's all I'm saying. And you can say, well, didn't He do that in the Old Testament with Israel? No. He chose Israel, but what He chose Israel to do is the same thing He told the Christian to do, to win the world. All nations, all people. God chose Israel to win the world to Him. And they failed. And so now He's chosen the Gentiles to bring the world to Him. You know what I'm saying at this point? We're failing. It's our job. But ain't you glad it don't matter if you're yellow, red, or black and white. Jesus wants to save everybody. Ain't you glad that He's not willing that any should perish? He don't care if you have red hair, blue hair, green hair, holes in your ears, holes in your nose. He don't care if you're wearing a whiskey shirt with a whiskey in your hand. He's wanting to save you. The ones that we turn our back on and we're scared of, God's willing to save them. God wants everybody and you better be thankful that God did not pick and choose. Some of us wouldn't have made it. Amen. I'm thankful that He calls out. Then you got 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 and John chapter 17. We're called out of darkness in 1 Peter. We're called out of the world in John chapter 17. We're we're called out of our old nature in the book of Romans. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 23, he says something like this. He brought us out so that He might bring us in. (laughs) That's what it says. I left out a word or two. I just put it down really quick and moved on. But it literally says, He called us out. Moses is saying it. He brought us out. He brought us out of Egypt that He might bring us in. And can I tell you, He's brought you all out of a lot of problems and a lot of ways and the world and your sin and everything else. And one day we're going to be ushered in heaven. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. I say, say it again, church. Say it again. Then we look in verses uh, 8 through 10. It goes on like this. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. If anybody had a spot tonight and I said, tell me some works that He done in in your life, could you stand up and talk about them? And when you did, would you be thankful? You see what I'm saying? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. His wonderful works to the children of men. For He satisfieth the longing soul. He filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Such 
as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Then he goes on from 10 all the way down to 14, how he brings you out of problems. And then he says again, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. I'm going to wind up with this. Do you know why it's good to give thanks unto the Lord? Somebody want to try to answer that? Let me help you. It's good to give thanks unto the Lord, one, because He likes it. Two, because He commanded it. Yeah, it's a command. He shouldn't have had to command it, Aiden, but He commanded it. But really what it does, when you give thanks to the Lord, your mind starts going back. And you're starting to think about all the good things He's done for you. When you stand up in a church and you say, This week, I went and seen, went and seen a doctor. The last time I seen him, I didn't tell nobody. But boy, I was having some major problems. And I got in there and I prayed to the Lord. And when I went back, the doctor said, It ain't there. And I'm here to tell the church, tell all the men, tell all the women, God is good. You're remembering all the little things. When you stand up and you say, man, when I was eight years old, two foot off the end of an altar, your mind is going back to the day that you got saved. You're remembering them things. And when you remember them things, then what happens is, is down the road when you're in another problem or you're in another despair, you're saying, well, He's already helped me back at that other one like that and he done the right thing and He was good. And so you'll say, He'll do it again. He'll do it again. You know what the main thing the church has got the problem with? Brother Tim, honestly, I mean this with all my heart. We are an unthankful bunch. We are. It's like giving to your kids over and over, buying them a car, buying them this, buying them that, buying them a shotgun, giving them your tree stand, they kill your deer in it, you let them have your boat, and they go fish, and they come back with a bigger fish than yours, and all they do is they stand up there and just keep thinking that it becomes mine, and I'm entitled to it. And you slowly quit hearing, thank you. What can I do for you, Daddy? What can I do for you, Mama? You've been good to me. You know, what you, you know why? Because all we did is keep giving them, opening up the wallet and giving it to them. And we've made them spoiled children. And the more that they stay thankful, the more you keep flipping it out there. The more they stay humble, the more that they say, Daddy, you shouldn't do that. You say, yeah, I should. You know, daddies, you know what I'm saying. I want to help you with that. No, daddy, please, no, I'll get it. No, no, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. But if they sit back and say, pay for it, daddy, I'm like, no. What do you think God does? When we take all His blessings, we don't thankful. We don't stop and say thank you. We don't stop and tell nobody about how good He's been to us. What do you think He does? Miss Phyllis, would you come play? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He's good. For His mercy endureth forever. Let, let, you let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You let. Well, this is the worst time of my life. Yeah, I know it. I know it. But we're supposed to give thanks in all things. Didn't say for all things. Said in all things. When's the last time you told the Lord, thank you? Thank you. Yeah, I got problems, Lord. I just thank you. 
I got the best. I'm, I'm serious when I say this. This is my first church I've ever pastored. Green as could I could be. And the Lord just didn't give me anywhere. He gave me the best church to preach at. To be a part of. The best. It has been the least problems of any church I've ever been a part of. This church. I am so thankful God sent me here. I got the best wife that a man could have. The best. The best. Brother Leroy likes to argue that with me when we talk about it. But my wife beats her wife all to his wife all to pieces. I got the best home to live in. Carol went and seen a mansion yesterday. I'm thinking, why do I want to go see a mansion? My mansion's better. It's mine. I enjoy it. The Lord has given me clothes, suits. I probably got ten to preach with. I'm thankful for that. I got two of the best kids that God gave me two more and they doubled it. Now I got the five of the best grandkids in the world. The best. Or even my grandkids are brother and brother Leroy's grandkids. Learn to say so. Learn to say so. Tell it again, church. Tell it again, Brother Tim. Aiden, tell it again. It's worth telling again. David, it's, it's worth telling again. He's good enough. He's blessed enough. Miss Hannah, I know that that's a rough situation, but how far he's come, that's worth being thankful for. Every day. Every day. As hard as it's been, as tiring and wore out as it's been, God has taught you more about prayer life than He ever has. Well, Tommy, as hard as it's been, sitting at the house by yourself for nine days, God has blessed you. She's come home. You know how many people ain't come home? They never will. Man, we got something to be thankful for. He's answered your prayers. Who are we that God should answer? Bend an ear toward us. Brother Hank, your granddaughter got saved this year. Why? Brother Roberts, the Roberts family, your little girl got saved this year. I've, been, I've even heard her stand up and brag on her parents like they somebody. God has answered some prayers. Has it still been some rough days? Sure. She's not going to hell. <laughs> Saved by the grace of God. We got some things to be thankful for, church. Amen. Amen. One day, even in them rough times, you're going to come to a place where you're going to see that God worked in them hard times, in the heart attacks, in the cancers, even in the deaths. And you're going to see where God has done some things. Me and Eddie talked just yesterday. The girls left, and it was just me and him in there in the living room. We was talking about his boy that he lost when his boy was 19 year old in a car wreck. And this is what he said. He 
He says, the hardest thing I've ever went through, Brother Tim. He just says, Tim. Hardest thing I've ever did was bury my boy. He said, there was a couple of days in there that I would literally thought I would lose my mind. But he says, it's been a while now. It's been some years. And he gave the years, and I'm sorry, I don't remember it. I know it's probably 10, 12 years ago. And he said this, Carol. As far as I know, that I know for a fact, he said there's been 15 people saved because my boy was taken. 15. He said, I know it for a fact. He said, and then we handed out tracks of little JoJo's life. And I forgot what the track says, my preacher boy or something, because the boy preached. And he said, I handed that track out to everybody. And he said, one day, I'm going to get to heaven. And God's going to say, I'm sorry. No, he's not going to say, I'm sorry. That ain't even what he said. He said, God's going to say, I didn't like taking your boy, but let me show you the reason. He's going to turn around and his boy's going to be standing there smiling. And all the people behind him, that his death brought somebody to Christ. And he said, you know what I'm going to say? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's hard. That's what he said yesterday. Church, be thankful. Be thankful enough, enough to say so. Lord, tonight we thank you for your Bible. I thank you, Lord, for saving us. I thank you for sending your Son to die in our place. I thank you, God, for blessing me along life's way. I thank you, Lord, for watching out over me. Lord, the problems that I got myself in, Lord, you was even with me there. And I thank you for that. Thank you for Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you for each and every member. Thank you for the ones that are here tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd bless their faithfulness. Help us, Lord, to draw closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you, church. See you.